So far, we've covered a few films on Ryoma Sakamoto. So far, I've covered Assassination of Ryoma, I've covered Bakamatsu, and now The Man Who Assassinated Ryoma. And all these films were given to me from SamuraiDVD.com, so if you want to get any of these, there's many Samurai films on there. Use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES at checkout. So, the other movies covered... Ryoma Sakamoto himself, but now this film covers the actual guy that supposedly assassinated him. And I say that because it is unknown who actually killed him. The actual suspects and conspiracies may never be known, but there was a clever way of showing this in this two-part TV movie it was titled Ryoma Forever. At the end it just shows all the groups that were trying to kill him. The Tosa clan, the Shinsengumi, the Mimawaragumi, and it was cool because it ends with them just heading towards the end that he was killed in. Essentially just making it ambiguous as to who actually killed him. It could have been any one of them. But back to the man who assassinated Ryoma. If you're going to have any discussion of this film along with any of the others I mentioned, you kind of have to have some knowledge of the history. So I'll just go over it real fast. During the last years of the Shogunate, Kyoto became a war zone. It was a time of much conflict. There's a lot of groups fighting each other. And just for a samurai to simply walk the street, it was a big risk of attack and possible death. <laughs> This is all described by the man who assassinated Ryoma, Sasaki Tadasabara. He was a samurai that was a direct vassal of the Shogun, and he was the leader of the Mima Waragumi. And immediately I recognized this character just because I just played Like a Dragon Ishin, except in this film Sasaki is the main protagonist. <laughs> The Mima Waragumi were assigned mainly to protect the Kyoto Imperial Palace, and especially the area around Nijo Castle, whereas the Shinsengumi were assigned to the Gion Entertainment District. So because the Mima Waragumi were samurai, and sometimes the Shinsengumi were just ronin, there was much tension between the two groups, even violence, even though they were supposed to be on the same side. The two main rivals of the Shogun were the Satsuma and Chosu clans. They themselves were rivals. Ryoma Sakamoto was originally from the Tosu clan, but he left without permission. This led to his own people going after him. Eventually, he succeeded in negotiating an alliance between the Satsuma and Chosu clans. This in turn made him an enemy of the Shogunate forces. So basically this is just a very dangerous environment. There's many gangs and assassinations taking place. And as a leader of the Mima Waragumi, Sasaki himself is just at risk for many attacks. But he himself is also sort of involved in all this violence. So in the film we first see Sasaki in Edo, and this is where he kills someone. Then we meet him again and he's getting married to Ye. And the way they meet just involves a really awkward scene where he's just splashing her with water. Only it goes on way too long and there's 
like music in it that doesn't fit. Yeah, it's a weird scene. And when we first meet Ryoma, immediately he's sort of the ladies' man. <laughs> he even refers to Sasaki as Mr. Beautiful Wife. And he does so after staring at his wife for a bit. <laughs> Soon, Sasaki is in Kyoto, and he's now the leader of the Mima Origumi. He's first seen killing escapees from this raid on an inn. From that point, he is trying to hunt down the Satsuma and Chosu members, while also fending off their attacks. And he also has to deal with this one Ronin that ran away with his first fiance. And there's a scene where Sasaki finds them together, but he doesn't really seem like he cares. It's probably because he cares more about his new wife. And there's sort of a funny scene where the Ronin himself actually gets offended by the fact that Sasaki doesn't want to kill him. He views it more so as Sasaki is too good for him, too good to even kill him. It shows you sort of just the class struggle that was going on. What's interesting is the swordsman that Sasaki kills in the beginning of the film is actually in another film titled Assassination. Kiyokawa was an unrivaled swordsman. He could not be brought down easily and it would take a bit of trickery. So when greeting someone, he would stop and untie the strings holding his hat and this would leave him open to attack. And what's interesting is that's how the film Assassination ends. And it's how this film begins. And Kiyokawa had also been the target of the Shinso group in the masterpiece film Sword of Doom. And this is when they mistakenly attack the wrong passenger and out comes an angry Toshiro Mifune. I just love that scene. And the Shinsugumi are also seen attacking Kiyokawa in the 2021 film Buragagi Unbroken Samurai. Ryoma. So to separate this film from the others, I'll say that this one looks really nice. It has just some beautiful scenery and colors. There's a few fights, nothing too memorable. But the main focus is on the character of Sasaki. And from what I read about him compared to the other leaders of the time, for some reason there's almost no information on Sasaki or the Mima Waragumi. So, I'm sure this film takes many liberties on what actually took place. Like I said, no one really knows who actually killed Ryoma. But I've also heard that members of the Mima Origumi eventually confessed that their organization had made the raid on him. So going by that, I could see where this movie was coming from. Similar to the other films too, and even the video game, kind of a confusing time period. It isn't always easy to follow just who's who, there's a lot of characters, a lot going on. To sum it up, Sasaki just wanted to kill Ryoma as punishment for negotiating an alliance with the Satsuma and Chosu clans. An alliance would, in a way, affect or even harm the Shogunate, so he was just trying to protect him. I think this is definitely the most beautiful of all these films, it definitely looks the nicest. There's plenty of scenes that you could just freeze and just admire as art. But some scenes do come off as awkward. I think some of them definitely needed to be edited. The music too doesn't really fit. And the pacing too I think could use some help. And I just don't find Sasaki that interesting of a character. In fact, I didn't even want him to win. Ryoma Sakamoto is just such a fascinating character, and he just overshadows anyone else. Whenever he was on screen, he would just steal it. Anyway, if you want to check out this film, you can get it on SamuraiDVD.com. Make sure you use the discount code BUSHIDOBLUES. I still have one more film on Ryoma, and that would be Assassination. Anyway, make sure you subscribe, and like always, thanks for watching. Thank you.